Zarathustra's eyes had discerned that a young man avoided him. As he walked alone one evening through the mountains surrounding the town, which was called the Multicolored Cow, behold, there while walking, he found this young man. He was leaning against a tree, gazing wearily into the valley. Zarathustra grabbed the tree at which the young man sat and spoke thus. If I wanted to shake this tree here with my hands, I would not be able to. But the wind that we do not see torments and bends this tree wherever it wants. We are like that. We are tormented and bent out of shape, worst, by hands that are invisible. Then the young man stood up, perplexed, and said, I hear Zarathustra, and I was just thinking about him. Zarathustra responded, Why are you startled by this? But it is indeed the same with human beings as it is with this tree. The more they aspire to the heights and to the light, the more strongly their roots strive earthward, downward, into darkness, into the depths, into evil. Yes, into evil, cried the young man. How is it possible that you have revealed my soul? Zarathustra smiled and said, Some souls will never be revealed, unless they are first invented. Yes, into evil, cried the young man again. Oh, Zarathustra, you speak the truth. I no longer trust myself since aspiring to these heights. And no one trusts me anymore either. How did this happen? I'm changing too fast. My today contradicts my yesterday. I often skip steps when I climb and, well, no step forgives me for that. And if I'm at the top, then I always find myself alone. No one speaks with me at all. Yes, the frost of loneliness makes me shiver. What did I want in coming up here to the heights? My contempt and my longing grow together. The higher I climb, the more I despise the one who climbs. What does he even want in the heights? How I am so now ashamed of my climbing and my stumbling. Now I mock my violent panting. I hate the flying one. How weary I am up here. Here the young man fell silent. And Zarathustra looked at the tree at which they stood and spoke thus. This tree stands here lonely on the mountain. It grew well beyond humans and animals. And if it wanted to speak, no doubt it would have no one who would understand it. So high this tree grew. Now it waits and waits. But what is it waiting for? It lives too near the clouds. It waits for the first lightning bolt. When Zarathustra had said this, the young man cried out, gesturing as if agitated. Yes, Zarathustra, you speak the truth. I longed for my destruction when I aspired to these heights. And you are the lightning for which I waited. Look, what am I anymore? Now that you have appeared among us, it is my envy of you which has now destroyed me. Thus spoke the young man and he wept bitterly. But Zarathustra put his arm around him and led him away. And after they had walked together for a while, Zarathustra started speaking thus. 
it tears my heart apart. Better than your words can say, your eyes tell me all your danger. You are still not free. You seek freedom. Your seeking made you sleep deprived and over awake. You aspire to the free heights. Your soul thirsts for the stars. But your wicked instincts also thirst for freedom. Yes, your wild dogs also want to get free. They bark with joy in their cellar when your spirit contrives to liberate all prisons. To me, you are still a prisoner who plots his freedom. Ah, the soul of such prisoners. They can grow so clever, but also so deceptive and rotten. The one who is free of spirit must still purify himself. Much prison and mold is left in him. His eyes still yet have to become pure. Yes, I know your danger. But by my love and hope, I beseech you, do not throw away your love and hope. You still feel noble. And others who begrudge you and give you the evil eye, even they still feel your nobility also. Know that if you're a noble person, you will stand in everyone's way. A noble person also stands in the way of the good. And even when they call him a good man, they do so in order just to get rid of him. The noble person wants to create new things and a new virtue. The good person wants old things and for old things to be preserved. But it's not the danger of the noble one that he'll be just become a good person. No, that he'd become a mocker and an annihilator. Oh, I knew people who lost their highest hope. And then they slandered all high hopes. And they lived churlishly in brief pleasures, barely even setting goals beyond the day. Spirit is lust too, so they spoke. Then the wings of their spirit broke. And now it crawls around and soils whatever it gnaws on. Once they thought of becoming heroes, now they are hedonists. To them, the hero is grief and ghastliness. But by my love and hope, I beseech you, do not throw away the hero in your soul. Hold holy your highest hope. Thus spoke Zarathustra.